Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're gonna begin our second attempt at machining a lead screw for the American Pacemaker Compound. Now I released a previous video, you may have seen that. If not, you might wanna check it out. I've already attempted to machine one of these. I was using the, uh, the Monarch lathe at the home shop and I ended up having some problems as I was finishing it out with the tool, um, not lining up with the threads properly. There was just some problems going on with the, uh, with the part and with the machine and the, uh, the thread was a failure there. So we're gonna come down here, which we're here now, and we're gonna be using our new Precision Matthews 1660 lathe. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remachine this. I ordered some stock from McMaster, so I have a couple pieces. I've actually got a piece of stress proof, and I've got a piece of 12L14. Now 12L14 is a dream material to machine. It's got the addition of lead in there, which makes it a completely free machining material. So uh, it's a good material to make parts out of, especially if you don't have to weld on these parts. But it's, um, it's a good material to machine. It chips easy, it finishes nice. So if you're looking for some good material to make little parts out of, uh, 12L14 is a good one to pick. But I would like a little bit of extra strength there. Your stress proof 1144 grade is gonna have a stronger tensile strength there. So I'd kinda rather do it as stress proof. So we're gonna try it again. We're gonna use the stress proof and uh, hopefully we're gonna make it happen this time. So I do have an added benefit of the, of the Precision Matthews lathe. Well, there's a couple of benefits here. One, that it's a brand new machine. We've already inspected it. We know that it's, uh, the, the tail stock is aligned properly. The head stock is near perfect alignment on it. So we should be able to make a nice straight cut in the tool. I should have no worry of the alignment of the tail stock making the part uh, pull down or anything like that like I have to deal with with the Monarch. The other thing is that I do, this lathe came equipped with a follower rust. So I have one that I can mount on here and I think we may end up using that whenever we go to do our threading to, uh, to kind of help prevent any kind of uh, deflection, you know, bowing of the part when you're coming through here. So. I've got the uh, machine filled up with some uh, soluble oil, flood coolant, so we can use that as well. So let's jump over here and get started on it. This is one of my dad's older uh, drill chucks he used to use in the lathe. I haven't used it in a while. So I brought it down here to, to use with the uh, Precision Matthews. We're set up to do our turning. This is a one inch bar stock, by the way. I'm also trying to get myself familiar with the DRO here on the lathe. So I'm gonna be playing around with this at the same time. Uh, it's gonna take me a little bit, probably a little slower than what I'm used to doing just because I'm trying to get used to the functions on this DRO. So I just wanted you to uh, see that we're trying to use this to our advantage, uh, especially on our uh, Z length right there. I'm gonna be turning nine inches and then I'm gonna be playing around with uh, setting like the diameter of, of what the bar stock is on your X and seeing if we can, if I can start getting used to using this for measuring diameter as we're uh, feeding in. Just use the uh, cross slide to visually look down to see what I wanna dial in, but then we can kind of get it close using the DRO. So I'm just letting you know, I'm gonna be playing around with this while we're doing our turning. All right, I think we're ready to make a cut. Let me try one without the coolant. We may we may run our flood coolant on here to kind of see how it how it's going to work. And that was the wrong direction. That's the other thing I got to get used to is the feed. All right, going the wrong way. All right, there we go. Actually, want to want to put a mic on that and see 
how uh, straight that it turned. Give it a quick mic here and kind of see where we're at. So that's uh, 895. Eight ninety five, so that right there turned nice and straight. We're doing good. I think this one I'm going to go ahead and test out our flood coolant. Turn that guy on. We shouldn't need much. I'm going to try to just have a small drip coming out on the tool here. We'll just try something like that right there. I don't want to have a huge mess on my hands here. Well, that's working nicely. Making our first official coolant mess on the PM lathe. I've got this Walter tool here that I got for the new lathe here to use. It is the MX-22, three-quarter shank. And this is gonna accept uh, threading inserts. I've also got a couple of radius inserts and even like a grooving insert as well. So it's kind of a, a universal tool to have here on the machine. So I've got a radius tool in there now and I'm gonna make the um, <clears throat> thread relief. Do it nice. Just gonna widen it out. Not a big deal on how wide this is. The uh, original part's about 3 16th wide. I'm sorry, 5 16ths, not 3 16ths. All right, well that insert did a good job on that. It's got a good uh, chip breaker profile built into it. So we've got the machine set up to start cutting our Acme thread and I was setting the uh, follower rest in here and I run into a problem. And this is the problem that I've run into many times when I'm trying to use a follower rest is it seems like half the time that you wanna use it, it's never in the actual position that you want to use it in. In my case, I'm not gonna be able to come down to my thread relief with the tool and where I've got everything positioned. I've got my compound the way it needs to be for the correct direction of end feed. So you see, we're gonna be coming up against the chuck. Now I could loosen the chuck, pull the material out further and chuck it back up. And then we would have clearance to do that. But a couple of problems there. I'm already machined perfectly true. So I don't wanna take it out of the chuck. And you can see that we're still further away from the tool than what we need to be. So that's just not really working out in my favor there. So I'm gonna run it without the follower rest and see if we can cut a good acne thread. I think it's gonna do fine. But let's go ahead and cut one and you know, and if something happens and I fail again on this one, then I'm gonna just machine another one. I've got material there. So we're gonna run it without the follower rest and see if we can get this done. We're gonna make us a, uh, a short scratch pass, check it with our pitch gauge and make sure that we have our machine uh, set, okay? So here we go.
that was still at zero, so let me actually feed it in just a little bit here. Okay, just want to do a little bit. Let's bring our dial back to zero. That digital readout, man, it's it's got a lot. Of, I got to get used to it. It does that. It's got that alarm whenever you're approaching your zero. It alarm, it beeps at you. All right, so we're using our. This is a this is an SPI Acme screw pitch gauge right here. And it looks like we are lined up perfectly on our five threads per inch Acme. So we are ready to cut.
on the threading dial, I'm hitting the one, two, three, or four lines. You have to go every other line, but you have to remember which one you start on. That's why I always start on one and then go from there. I wanted to pause for just a minute and uh, give mention that I think that the machine is doing excellent on this uh, Acme thread. We got some really pretty chips right here that just came off that last pass. Looks really nice. It's starting to clean up and we're really close to our uh, minor diameter there. Uh, the problem is, is that I forgot to bring my test nut and I forgot to bring uh, my notes that I wrote down. It's at the uh, home shop there. so. I'm gonna stop where I'm at because it's getting real close. I'm gonna take a trip back up there to the other shop. I'm gonna grab the stuff that I need. I'm gonna take me a lunch break, come back, and we're gonna finish this guy out. But I think it's doing great. All right, I've returned with our Acme nut. This is one that we machined to use as a test nut on this. And this is how I'm gonna fit the thread. Instead of measuring it, I'm gonna use this to gauge the thread by just hand fitting it and seeing when it goes on there, how close it is, and try to minimize our uh, backlash. Now, there's other ways you can do this. Obviously, you can measure your thread pitch diameter in the machinery's handbook that give you a formula to use to calculate a wire size that you can lay down in this thread and then mic over that with a micrometer to uh, land on your, your pitch diameter, the thread pitch diameter. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to be hand fitting it just because it's a one single part for my own use. But it's obvious that if you were machining these, uh, many of them, you know, you're going to want to keep them consistent. You're going to want to mic them and make sure that your thread pitch diameter is the same each and every time. And uh, keep them within the uh, allowable tolerances that are given in the machinery's handbook. But we should be getting really close. Now I'm going to be sneaking up on it, making some uh, lighter cuts and trying to get it down until we have a good fit, hopefully have a good fit on our nut. close <clears throat> we're just sneaking up on it feels like we still got a few more thousands to come out for our test nut to fit
Almost there. I thought it was going to go, but it's starting to get tight. We're getting really close now. I think we have hit our target on our new lead screw here. I was taking one thousandths per pass. It gets a little bit snug right there on the very end, but it's just because of that, that lead thread kind of trying to roll over. It's got a good fit. There's, there's literally no backlash that I can feel in it. It's got a little spot right there where it wants to try to get a little snug right there as well. I'm going to do some more filing on the top of the threads there and make sure that we don't have any uh, rolled up burr that's uh, causing it to tighten up. And we go all the way to our thread relief there. So I don't want to take any more off this because I want to have maximum fit that we can. And this will eventually just start wearing in and then start getting loose over the years. But I think it's certainly going to last the rest of my lifetime when I'm going to be running this, uh, this lathe. So I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved that we finally got this uh, screw machined properly, the lead screw part of it anyway, the Acme thread, I mean. And I'm really happy with the Precision Matthews lathe. It's, everything about it is really smooth. It's a good, quiet running machine. And I like having something that's new that I know that's going to be accurate to uh, do these machining ops the way, the way I want. So that is going to be it besides some uh, filing and polishing on our new lead screw there. This is a little tricky to show accurately because you do have a little thread clearance, but the thread pitch um, is very close. So I'm trying to show like backlash in the threads. So I'm trying not to twist the nut, but just push it and let the indicator push back on it. And you can see I'm getting maybe a thousandths of backlash in the threads. All right, so we have a successfully cut three quarter five left hand Acme thread right here. I'm real happy with, with the way that this uh, finished. I think it's gonna be a great screw for our compound rebuild. So I need to unfortunately stop on this project and start on another project so that we can continue on with this. And what I need to do is uh, I need to finish getting our new Hydemech saw set up. It's ready to go, it's under power, but I need to uh, clean it and put some coolant in it. I wanna make some uh, leveling pads to set it on. I just haven't messed with that project yet and I need to get to it. So I'm gonna do that right now because I want to take our piece of material right here and go over there to the hide mech to be able to cut it off and have the saw ready so that we can start um, you know, sawing parts whenever we need. So I'm going to jump on that project right now and get that go and get the saw ready so that we can continue on uh, machining our leech group. We're going to cut it 11 and 1 8. It finishes 11 and 1 16. That's not a real critical dimension there, but we're going to make it what the original is 11 and 1 8. All right, we're good to go. Semi auto. Man, I love it. Such a sweet saw. 
So this is the other end of the lead screw we're going to be machining. We have some threads here for a bearing lock nut. Uh, the two bearings press on right here. This is where the gear presses on and then you got a couple of keyways. So pretty straightforward stuff right there. And uh, that's what we're about to start on now. So I wanted to show you the repeatability or should I say we chucked this in there and then uh, I'm gonna, gonna show you the uh, TIR, total indicated readout here, which is one thousandth of an inch. So not bad at all. That's gonna be expected with a scroll chuck, especially a, uh, you know, a three jaw scroll, a scroll chuck that you can't set on the back there to, to get it adjust. But that's gonna be good. So far the chuck has been working excellent. And anytime you can throw a part in there and it's running within one thousandths, that's, uh, that's usually good to go for most of your general work that you're doing over here. How you doing? You scared me a little bit. What can I do for you? I'm just going to work on getting the uh, the rest of these uh, journals turned right here. And I think what I want to do is just some basic turning, guys. You just get these two uh, journals turned right here. And then when I'm ready to do the threads, I'm going to bring you back and give you a close-up shot because this is going to be a really fine pitch thread that we're going to be uh, machining there on the end. All right, we've got our uh, three main journals here. This one's going to be for the gear, and it is machined to... Uh, 563,000, so I matched the original shaft. We had a really light press fit on that, so that should be good. And then this next journal is where our two ball bearings are gonna go. These guys right there, 12 millimeter ID. I've actually got the uh, journal turned to, let me check it again right here, 473 thousandths. That should be a good fit. I actually mic'd the ID of the bearing and it should be just a very, very light interference fit going on there with the bearing. All right, and then on the end, this is where we got to machine our threads for this bearing nut right here. This is a number one bearing retainer nut. It's got 30, it's, it's 32 threads per inch. It's a very fine pitch. And so we're gonna do that next. Go ahead and uh, cut those threads right on the end of that shaft there. I've got our compound set up, ready to cut our threads. I've already got it touched off. We put some blue on there just so it's a little bit easier to see. So 32 threads per inch. Let's make a scratch pass and check it and make sure we're good to go here. Now that being 32 threads per inch, I should be able to engage these half nuts on this machine at any location. I don't even have to uh, look at the uh, dial. But I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna prove it out. I always like doing that, especially on video. I don't know if you're hearing that beep or not. The, uh, the DRO, I have it set to a zero approach, which is like a little alarm letting you know that you're coming up to your zero. And I'm trying to see if I like that or not, but you can dis you can disable that if you don't want to hear that beeping. All right, so here's our leaf for uh, 32 threads per inch using the uh, thread pitch gauge. I got you zoomed in pretty tight there. So let's see, is that on 32? That looks like 32 threads per inch right there. Yep. So let's go for it. We're going to be taking a. Uh, Total thread depth approximately 23 thousandths 
on the uh, compound. We're using compound infeed for this. Taking five thousand to pass here. right there so we need to go ahead and back off on our center and we'll uh, we'll give the nut a try still a little tight so we've got a little ways to go on that One thousandths. I'm at a total of twenty-three thousandths on our compound. Let's see how we're how we're doing. Still a little tight. it but I need to take another pass because it is a little it's a little too tight that was a half a thousandths on the dial so we'll take another half a thousandths and see if that'll clean it up so our nut will screw on there by hand all right so we're a total of 24 Pass there, it's still a little too snug on the threads, but we're right there. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try it again. Take another half. Looks like I should have I should have taken care of it right there. Let me get it started straight. It's a good fit right there. That's a machinist fit for you. It probably wouldn't hurt actually to make another spring pass across there because it's still a little bit on the tight side. Let's see if we can do that. Let's uh, come in here. Let's just make a spring pass and see if we can take any more out of it. Let's see what happens. Not very much, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back in and do that again. That's gonna be the ticket right there. that doesn't work I'm gonna run a smooth file across the threads but that's it right there see that that's going on nice nice precision fit All right, guys, we have a complete, completely turned lead screw for our pacemaker compound there, and it turned out great. I'm really happy with the Precision Matthews lathe. I think it's doing an excellent job. I'm really pleased with 
<clears throat> how it's functioning, how it's turning, the, uh, the finishes I'm getting, the uh, smoothness of the gearbox, um, the, the noise level that it puts out. And lead screw's working good. I really like the function of the uh, half nuts here, the way it engages. Everything is working really good on it. So I'm happy with our Precision Matthews lathe. So I think from here, we're gonna go back to the home shop. I've got, we've got a Woodruff key to mill in there and then we have the straight key. That's gonna be for your bearing nut retainer, the little lock ring. So that's the last two uh, pieces of this guy that we've got a machine. We'll probably just go ahead and do that on the do all. I've got Woodruff cutters there and we will uh, just finish out the milling there. And then once we get through with that, that's when we're gonna jump on our new lead screw nut to go with our new lead screw. So we'll see you at the other shop.